Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities in Miniatures, and today I've got the latest and greatest that I have been long and patiently waiting for from Mierce Miniatures, that is Garth of Kurnow, one of their kill runes. Now this guy was originally available mounted on a Manticore figure, and I'll be honest, it was a really great looking model, and I just don't think I would ever get around to painting it. I'd build it, absolutely, but I really wanted the version on foot. Well, my patience paid off, Mears made him available on his own, and I'm more than happily obliged. And you can see there's quite a bit of kitten here for just a regular old dude on foot. Well, he's not a regular old guy. I mean, he's supposed to be a, a big named hero. So, now I opted for the resin version, and I want to say that there is a plastic version available as well. So, or plastic. Metal. I meant metal. If that is something you would prefer, you're more than welcome to take that route, but I love Mears's resin stuff. Okay, this guy was digitally sculpted by Bob, whose name I can never pronounce correctly. It's kind of like their in-house sculptor. He's done a lot of this stuff in their 3D renders as of late. So one thing I gotta say for the 3D sculpted stuff, it's quite solid. Um, I've never had an issue with pieces not wanting to cooperate or fit. And I've never had an issue with Mears's resins not keeping all of the details that they pack in there. So that's always a plus. This guy looks like he's going to be big, too. Where is my witch hunter friend? There you are. That's just his leg, okay? And if you know Mears's stuff, especially... The humans tend to be more true-scaled. Now, this is supposed to be a big dude, so keep that in mind. Here we have one of the other Yeezians I've painted. So, yeah, he's going to be big. Is he going to beat out Kerouac in terms of big bad guys? I don't know yet. Let's wait and see. So, we have the main body with the cloak, or the lower portion of the cloak. We do have a base top, but that's always nice to see. The main torso. And again, you can see they really pack in those details. Stitching on the armband, the various baubles and trinkets he's got there, the veins on his bulging muscles. I'm assuming that's where... Well, something's going to go in there. Probably most of his cloak. Look at this thing. This is nuts. Now, I don't know if it's actually a cloak and a, a back piece, I think. I'm not sure where that second contact point is supposed to go. This is going to slot in like that. We'll figure it out, but there's just a lot to take in. There's a bear head. I didn't even know there was a bear head. And a swine head from probably an Anglican. Oh, that's... I thought there was a runestone. Nope, that's a crocodile from the Cthone. This guy means business. So that is a whole lot of severed heads. This is like the living embodiment of Skull Taker of corn. So actually, that's kind of a cool idea. Hopefully that base topper is going to cooperate. All right, what do we have? Some major honking axes. These things are massive. We measure with Inquisitors. <laughs> yeah, they're big. All right, what else we got? Um, some sort of straps, a second leg, a little bit of cleanup necessary there, spikes all over the place, but that's pretty much part of the course with the Easians. And then we've got some antlers for his head in a very dark Eldarish, completely enclosed faceplate. There are some breathing holes at least. So yeah. Quite a bit of parts for just a single guy, but he looks like he's going to end up being a man among men. He is going to be quite the showstopper, I'm sure, and I absolutely and eagerly look forward to getting this guy put together. So, sit tight, we'll get him all done, and we'll see how he stacks up to some of the other stuff we've got laying around, both for Mears and other companies. Alright, we got Garth. The Kill Drune all put together here, or about as much as I'm willing to put him together prior to actually painting him. So a couple of interesting things. First of all, I have absolutely no idea if those straps on his loincloth area, belt, whatever, if that's actually where they're supposed to go. It kind of looked like it. I just glued them on in a 
spot that seemed like they would fit. I, I honestly have no idea. Uh, another interesting thing was that I could not get the spots on his feet to actually line up. Now, interesting thing there is only the right foot actually has a keyed piece to fit into the slot, whereas the left leg does not. Okay. And the base topper does fit in the base, so that's always good. Another thing, his cape. So here's an interesting bit. So there's these two spots right here that connect the very top and right underneath it. But then there's a third connection point. But there's only two slots on the back. There's this kind of smoothed over area. And I'm kind of wondering if perhaps that extra keyed position is for the mounted version. Obviously, I don't have the mounted version. I only wanted the on foot version and that could be something that this trophy rack is just supposed to sit on both of them and I mean that would kind of make sense it's not like you can really see it once it's attached either so it's not a huge issue but he is quite impressive with his kills draped all over him moving back just a teeny tiny bit and he is a big guy even though he's hunched over like this um, he still dwarfs our witch hunter friend, grabbing a historical barbarian dark age Irishman type model. You can see here he is absolutely going to tower over them if you want to use these as some kind of crazy Northman invaders. Using even a regular easy and drune, you can see there is a big size discrepancy. This is a big bad dude. And when you throw him up against the likes of even Kerouac here, you can see maybe they're about on equal footing, but they're both quite impressive, especially if you get other models. Let's say, grab a frost grave human. Yeah, he looks absolutely puny. Or one of the untamed beast, wild barbarian types. Pretty good modern GW stand-in. And you can still see there there's some big bad sizing issues here, in, in a good sense. Stacking them up with some other Mears models here. I do have a modern, I want to say modern Mears Norseman. In the sense that I know the original ones were a little bit smaller, more in line with our metal easy and friend over here. But these guys are both by the same sculptor as well. Both have been 3D sculpted. And I think they fit in pretty decent. So... I gotta say, I do appreciate the fact that Mears is going back and upping the size and bulkiness and chunkiness, for lack of better wording, of a lot of the older infantry foot models, and they really do look good. So I gotta say, I'm really happy I got a hold of this guy, and hopefully, I mean, considering how many years now I've had Kerouac here, he's not the greatest paint job, but I'm hoping that with Garth of Kurnow, I can at least do a better job. So... Definitely thumbs up from Mears as always. I will put a link down below if you want to take a look at what they've got. And we'll put a link specifically for Garth here as well in case you are curious. And again, other than the weird issues with the keyed spots and things that don't go anywhere. Uh, and the mysterious straps that I'm not 100% sure, but I think they're not that big of a deal. He is an absolutely fantastic looking model, especially if you want a very impressive intimidating looking barbarian type i really don't think you can go wrong with something like this with that said this has been i lord tamberlane with obscurities and miniatures saying thanks for watching and we will see you back here soon bye bye